Hello, Mrs. Neumeyer back here again with our study of the science of probability. Now, question for you. When you get a gumball out of a gumball machine, have you ever done that before? What is your favorite color gumball? Let's see. Mine, I think I like blue. And it makes my tongue all blue and even my lips all blue. Have you ever had that happen to you? Well, let me show you my gumball here. I'm going to move the camera a little bit to show you this gumball I have here. Now, gumball machine, just as a paper. If I move it, my little gumballs will move. So let me just hold it here so you guys can see. Okay, so as you can see in my pretend gumball machine here, I've got one blue and how many orange do you see? Three. Okay, and how many are there total? All right, so remember last week we talked about our probability being uh, the desired outcome. I'm just going to put as a D, that's our, our, we'll all go ahead and write it out. Desired outcome over our total. Okay, so what did we say our total was for our gumball machine? We have four total gumballs possible. Now, I told you my favorite was blue. What are the chances that I'm going to get a blue gumball? One out of four, right? Now, say, let's pretend my favorite was the orange. Hold this up. I'll put this like this. All right. What are the chances that we're going to get an orange gumball? All right, that would be three out of four. So for orange, this is for blue. Okay, now, how would I make the chances closer to what we learned last week with the coin toss? The 50-50 chance, the one out of two chance. How would I make this? If I were to change it, like say I could put the gumballs in myself, how would I change this so it would be a one in two chance? Well. I could add two blue gumballs. So now there's three orange and three blue. So there's a 50-50 chance. There's a one out of two chance that I'm going to get blue. Now, you might be saying, wait, how is there a one out of two chance if we have now six total gumballs? Oops, I skipped that. So my total now is six. And how many did I have blue in here now? Three. Oh, my pen is running out. Well, if you are one of our older kids and have done reducing fractions, you know that three out of six is one out of two. And my pen is not working anymore, so we won't be writing that down. But it's one out of two. The chances are one out of two when it's half and half, when there's the same amount of one color versus the other color. Well, today we're going to be doing an experiment all together in class where we're going to be pulling out chips or things out of a bag so that we can determine what are the probabilities you're going to get certain colors and then what are the chances you're going to get a certain color. It's going to be a sampling. Now, a sampling is where we do a small number of something and in this case, drawing out chips in order to predict what it would be on a larger scale. So we're going to do a few, but it hopefully will inform us what it would be if it was a bigger study. For example, I've got some in here and we're going to pull some out. So let me show you. All right. I've got three different colors in here. So the first one is red. Right now, if I pull out another one, ooh, it's purple. Now, I'm going to keep drawing, and what you guys can do is take your bags and pass it around the class and ha let everyone have a chance to draw and see how many come out. Now, what you're going to see is, don't do it quite yet, what you're going to start seeing is a pattern. You'll see, oh, okay, so far I have two reds and I have one purple, and you're going to keep drawing 
and maybe do it two times per student. Go around till you have a good sampling of a number. Now, in my bag, there is a hundred of these. And so I'm going to do, uh, let's do 10, because that will be a nice way for us to be able to see what our sample is on a smaller scale so that we could predict what our ratio of colors, because there's not the same number of colors in this bag. So what I mean by that is I've got red in there, I've got purple in there, and then I've also got green in there, but there's not the same number of each one. There's a different number of reds, greens, and purples. So I'm gonna do my sampling to see if I can predict how many there are of each in that bag to equal 100. So, so far I've drawn four. Let me keep showing you before you guys start. Let me do 10. All right, I've got another red one. Lots of red. All right, let's see what else. Ooh, another purple, okay. And another purple. So far, no greens. Hmm, what does that tell us about greens? And, oh, here's a green. I did get a green, okay. And another green. All right, I've got three reds, four purples, and two greens. Oh, that's 10, that's 10 draws. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and see what I have so far. So I said I have three reds and four purples and two greens for my 10. Now, if I were to take that and I were to see how many that is so far, let's figure out how many we're gonna predict are in each, each of the colors are in the bag. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna recommend keeping track of your results. I've got a new pen here so we can do it. All right, here's red, green, and purple. Okay, so out of my 10 draws, I got three reds. So I'm gonna make three tally marks. I had two that were green and four that were purple. Okay, so now I wanna show you guys this. So I said that there is 100 in the bag but I drew 10 of them. So three out of 10 were red. Of my 10 draws, so remember that was my total, and three were red. Now, I'm going to have the same bottom number for all three of these, right? Because this is the total. Two out of 10 were green, and four out of 10 were the purple. And these, all, these numbers all add up to 10 because that was 10 draws. All right, now I said that there were 100 in there. So let's see if our sampling might be close to what is actually in there. If I say 100 draws, or if we were to do it 100 times, pull out all of those chips out of the bag, how many of them do we think would be red based on our sample? Well, 10 times 10 is 100 which is our bottom number here. So I can do that same to the top. So we have 30 out of 100 or red, or that's what we're guessing anyway. 20 we're guessing would be green and 40 are likely to be purple. Not so much of a guess as it is our sampling. We're trying to predict how many might be of those numbers in the bag. Now, I'll tell you that in my bag, there were actually, there were, let's see, hmm, did I do that right? All right, you know what guys, I just realized I forgot about one more. I had actually drawn five purple, so this should be 50 here. There we go, now it all adds up. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that, but I just did. All right, so I'll tell you what was actually in my bag. Now, it might be different in your bag, so this is just showing you an example, but I want you guys to draw when we're done with this video and see what you guys get. Now, in my bag, I actually had, what did I actually had? I actually had 80, no, 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 40 that were purple, I had 40 that were red and 20 that were green. So 
pretty right on here with the green, right? And we're pretty close with our sampling of what was actually in the bag. And so that, that is pretty close, but I wonder what would have happened if we would have drawn more. So I only drew 10, but you're, if you draw more in your class, you might even be get closer to your actual numbers from your sampling. I want you to give it a try. Now to conclude, before you start your experiment, I just want to show you, this is in our foundations guide on page 265. And we're talking about how likely things are to happen. So here was our one that we did last week, the coin toss, where it was 50-50 chance. Now, this is closer, this is like when we're talking about our gumball, right? If it's more likely or less likely, this over here is if it's impossible, and this is if it's certain, if in between here, the even chance, it's either more likely or less likely. So like when I had the two gumballs, or the, the, the one blue out of the four, how likely was it that I was going to draw that blue gumball when there's only one out of four? That was more, it was more on the unlikely scale, wasn't it? And then I added more gumballs to give myself an even chance of getting that blue. How likely was it that I would get an orange one when we first had it in there? We had one blue and three orange. It was more likely, wasn't it? So it would go more closer to the certain. It wasn't certain. Certain would only be if they were all what the color I had hoped for. Then it would be certain. Like, say the whole thing was filled with blue gumballs, then it's certain that I would get a blue one. Or if they were all orange, how likely would it be to get a blue one? Completely impossible, right? So this is helpful when we think about our chances to look at this kind of scale. And that's what our numbers are getting us too, is if we say it's a one in four chance, it's less likely. But if it's a three in four chance, it's more likely. All right, so practice with your chips, drawing them out. Maybe each person gets it, draw it twice and see what numbers you come up with as a class and see how closely you can estimate based on how many are actually in that bag. Enjoy sampling. Bye-bye.